it's time for Orchard Skills. One of the most popular and fastest growing technologies in C-sharp development has been Blazor WebAssembly. Instead of JavaScript, it allows you to write front-end client code in C-sharp. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be integrating Blazor WebAssembly into an Orchard Core CMS web application. Welcome back. Back in June 2015, Steve Sanderson gave a talk on the future of web development in 2020 at the NDC conference in Oslo, Norway. He talked about WebAssembly as being an up-and-coming future technology. At the time, Steve Sanderson experimented with WebAssembly but couldn't get c -sharp to work. He actually gave up on the idea for a while. But back in spring of 2017, he found the .NET runtime called .NET Anywhere, written by Chris Bacon. That changed everything. With this library and the updated technology in WebAssembly, he was able to create the first C-sharp WebAssembly front-end client that runs in a modern browser. Fast forward to 2020, and on May 19th, Blazor WebAssembly was officially released. Just recently, in August, at the NDC 2020 conference at Oslo, Norway, Steve Sanderson gave a talk on modern web UI with Blazor WebAssembly. Let's get started. With your favorite browser, browse to github.com slash orchardskills slash orchardcores.orchardcms. And let's go ahead and click on the green code button and open with GitHub Desktop. Press the Open GitHub Desktop EXE button. Okay, let's go ahead and clone the repository. Okay, let's fire up Visual Studio and let's load the solution. Okay, so this is our standard solution for just creating an Orchard CMS web application. And let's go ahead and right click on the solution and add new project. And let's click on Blazor Web and hit Next, let's call it orchardskills.orchardcore.clientapp and hit create. And let's select Blazor WebAssembly and then just hit the create button. Okay, great. Now let's go to the startup.cs file in the main web application. And let's add app.use HTTP redirection, app.use Blazor framework files, app.use static files, app.use orchard core, and then app.use routing. Okay, then we'll have to add our old style Razor files, which is the CSHTML, and we'll need a layout, validation scripts partial, view imports, view start, which references the layout, an error, and then also an index. And the my counter will actually reference, if we go up here, to the counter.razor code that's in the client app. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And let's go up and hit the green triangle play button. Okay, great. We got the Orchard Core setup page. Select our site name. Let's select the blog recipe. Enter our credentials. And let's click the finish setup button. And so now you can see we have our WebAssembly inside an Orchard Core application. So we can click on the button and we can see our update counter. And let's see, are we really running Orchard Core? So let's go ahead and do a slash admin. And there we get the login page and hit login. There we go, we have our dashboard running. What's really amazing is if we go back here and click on Shift-Alt-D, we bring up a browser. It says, unable to find developer browser tag. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's copy this here. Do a Windows R. Okay, that brings up another one here. And let's go Shift-Alt-D again. And then we can actually see us debugging here. We can click on Sources. Go to our file. Here's our program files. So you can see here make this bigger. We can actually see our C-sharp code in here, and we can actually set breakpoints on here. Isn't that slick? 
To recap, we took our Orchard Core CMS web application and added a Razor WebAssembly client project. In the Orchard Core setup page, we entered our site name, selected the blog recipe, and entered our credentials. When the page displayed, we saw our Razor WebAssembly application integrated into our Orchard Core web application. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.